What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here and moving on to the next video dealing with properties of functions. In this particular video, we're gonna talk about even versus odd functions or sometimes you'll see this called the symmetry of functions. And in this particular video, we'll just go through the overview of the different properties. And then after you'll see in the section, I have more videos of examples from basic to advanced. Honestly, some of the more advanced ones, they might be a little bit overkill for your specific school or your specific teacher. But some teachers I've seen do like to ask tough questions about this concept. And so when students have sent me these questions, uh, I decided to make videos on them as well in case your teacher is going through more advanced questions as well. But even if your teacher isn't, I still recommend watching those videos because it is going to reinforce the concept for you and help you understand it better with the more basic examples. But in this video, we're just going to do an overview of the different properties. So let's start talking about even functions first. And with even and odd functions, there's two ways to look at them. You can look at them graphically, and you can also look at them algebraically. And so you have to know how both of these work. And so for an even function, graphically, basically it has to be symmetrical about the y-axis. And sometimes you'll also see this called axis symmetry. And I'll show you an example in a sec of how that looks. Algebraically, what's gonna have to happen for an even function, basically f of negative x, okay, if you plug in negative x for all the x values, it has to equal the original function f of x, okay? And so if this property here is going to hold, then you know that it's going to be an even function. So a simple example of an even function is the parent function x squared, f of x equals x squared. So if we graph this, we know x squared is just a parabola that has a vertex at the origin, so it looks like this. And so notice, just by looking at the graph, we could tell that it's symmetrical about the y-axis meaning that if we take this half of the graph on the right side of the y-axis and we reflect it over, we would end up with this half right here. And then vice versa, if we take this half, reflect it over the y-axis, we would end up with the other half, right? It's perfectly symmetrical about the y-axis, not the x-axis, about the y-axis. Okay, so just looking at it graphically, we could tell that it's an even function. Now, what if we were to show this algebraically? And as you'll see in further examples, we will have to show it algebraically. How would we do that? Well, okay, we know f of x is equal to x squared. So we have to check, does f of negative x equal the original function, right? And so if we take f of negative x, meaning we plug in negative x for all the x values. Well, there's only one x value here in brackets. So this would end up being negative x squared, like that. And then notice that there's like a negative one here. And so basically the negative one, if we distribute this two into the bracket, because the rule is with exponents, if you remember, if you have two things in a bracket multiplying and they're all to the power of an exponent, you could take both things separately to that exponent. So here the negative one and the x are multiplying. So I could take the negative one to the power of two and then x to the power of two. Negative one to the power of two is just one and we're left with x squared. And notice that x squared is the original function, right? And so notice that f of negative x we showed that it's equal to the original function x squared. And so f of negative x equals f of x. And so we showed algebraically that x squared is an even function as well, right? And all this does here, algebraically, if you're wondering about the intuition of it, is it's basically showing that the y values are gonna be the same for the positive x values and for the negative x values and that would make it symmetrical about the y-axis, right? So we're just proving that symmetry about the y-axis algebraically 
when we're dealing with this property. Now, what about odd functions? How are odd functions going to behave? So again, we're gonna show it both graphically and algebraically. And a common description that you'll see in textbooks is they'll say that an odd function is rotationally symmetrical or has rotational symmetry about the origin. Now, personally, I don't like that description. Uh, sounds a little bit confusing when you hear at first, and I'll give you a better one in a sec, but I did want to put it because a lot of textbooks have it. And so I don't want you getting confused that I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about the same thing, but I'm going to give you a lot better of a way to look at it graphically. Another um, term that you might see thrown around for odd functions is that they have point symmetry. And that point is basically the origin. Okay, even functions had axis symmetry, odd functions have point symmetry. And here is the way that I like to look at it graphically is that it is symmetrical about both axes. So it's symmetrical about the x and y-axis. So if you remember, even functions were only symmetrical about the y-axis versus this one is going to be symmetrical about both the x and y-axis. And I'll show you in an example in a sec how that looks like. And then algebraically, the expression for that is we have to show that f of negative x is going to equal negative f of x. Basically, whatever the function is, we're going to multiply it by negative 1. We're going to put a negative in front. And so if we could show that plugging in negative x for all the x values in the function is equal to negative f of x, then algebraically we showed that we're dealing with an odd function. And a simple example of that is x cubed. Okay, the way x cubed looks like is it looks like this right here. Okay, so let's go through these descriptions. Rotational symmetry about the origin or point symmetry. Basically what they mean is that about the origin, right? If I take this half of the graph and if I rotate it basically 180 degrees, I'm going to end up with this half right here or vice versa. If I take this half and rotate it, doesn't matter which way, you could rotate it this way, you could rotate it this way. If I rotate this half, I'll end up with this half right here. So that's what they mean by rotational symmetry. But for me, I don't like that description because it's not as definite. This is the way I like to look at it right here. Symmetrical about the x and y axis. So what that means is, okay, if I take this half, right? If I reflect it about the y-axis, notice that I'll get this. And then if I take that and reflect it about the x-axis, then I get the other half of the function. And so if you take one half and reflect it about the y-axis and then the x-axis or vice versa, right? So we could have took this and reflected it about the x-axis first. So if we do that, we would get this. If we took this half, reflected it, and then if I take this and reflect it about the y-axis, I end up with that. Okay, so for me personally, that's a more definite way to look at it and an easier way than thinking about rotations and stuff like that, right? Just take one half, reflect it about both axes, and you should get the other half. And if you see a graph and that's happening, then you know you're dealing with an odd function, right? Versus an even function, we were just taking the half and checking does it reflect about the y-axis? Remember like x squared, like a quadratic? In this case with odd functions, they'll reflect uh, about both axes. So x cubed is an example of an odd function. Now algebraically, let's see what happens. So f of negative x, if I plug in negative x for the x value here, so you gotta put the negative x in brackets and that's going to be to the power of 3. Using that same exponent rule, I take the negative 1 here to the power of 3, and then I take the x to the power of 3. Now, negative 1 to the power of 3 is still negative 1. 
right? Negative one to an odd exponent is gonna stay negative one. Negative one to an even exponent, like we had in the previous example, goes to a positive one. So this is actually gonna stay as a negative one, and then x cubed is just x cubed. And so notice that this here, right? It's negative f of x, because f of x was x cubed. That was our original function. And so we showed that f of negative x ended up being negative, there's like a negative one here, times x cubed, which was the original function. So we showed f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. So we proved this property here algebraically. And so it is an, uh, it's an odd function. Now, if you're wondering what the intuition is of this expression here, again, you don't need to know the intuition of it. It's a little bit overkill, maybe digging into it, though I know some of you are curious, so I will try to explain it. This one's gonna to be tougher to explain than the even one. But the most important thing is just remembering what the property is and being able to do it algebraically, which we'll do in uh, future examples, right? That f of negative x equals f of x for even functions, f of negative x equals negative f of x for odd functions. But if you're wondering, basically what it means is that if we're plugging in the negative x values, right, over here, the y values that we should end up with here are equal to the y values if we plug in positive x's multiplied by negative 1, meaning reflected. So now they're going to be down here, right? Because there's this negative 1 here, right? So with this x cubed in particular, if we're plugging in the positive x values, right? The y values are positive, as you could see, and then if we multiply them by negative one, they'll become negative, which is what the y values are. That's the sign of the y values if we plug in negative x, right, in order to get that. Okay, so anyway, it's, uh, it's a little tough to explain. And again, you don't need to know the intuition too much of it. Just remember the property. But in case you're wondering, that's what's basically... Uh, that's what's basically going on with uh, odd functions and how this uh, property comes about, right? It basically comes about because an odd function is going to be symmetrical about the x and y axis. And so algebraically, the property that comes out of that is this property right here, where f of negative x is going to equal negative f of x. All right, and that's basically how even and odd functions work. Actually, you know what? I'll show you one more thing. Because in these questions, and again, you're going to see it in uh, the next few videos that I'm going to do, they're going to say, show that this function is either even, odd, or neither. Because you could have functions that are neither even or odd as well. So let me give you an example of a function that is neither. And basically, algebraically, what that means is f of negative x does not equal f of x right? That's the even property. And then f of negative x does not equal negative f of x. Okay, and then um, graphically, you could also tell that there's no symmetry either over the y-axis or over both axes. So an example of a neither function is uh, like y equals 2 to the power of x, right? Just a simple parent exponential function like this. So you could tell just by looking at it, right? It's not symmetrical, right? If I take this half and if I reflect it, I'm definitely not going to get this half. If I reflect it over both axes, I'm still not going to get this half, right? If I reflect this over here and then if I reflect this over here, I'm not getting this, okay? So graphically, you could tell it's not even or odd. And then uh, algebraically as well, because f of negative x is basically going to equal 2 to the power of negative x, okay? And 2 to the power of negative x is definitely not the original function, right? So this property here, f of negative x equaling the original function f of x is failing, right? And then uh, it also doesn't equal negative f of x because if it was negative f of x, there would just be a negative in front of the 2 to the power of x, but the negative is in the exponent, right? So it doesn't satisfy this property either. So that's failing, that's failing. So 2 to the power of x is an example of a function that's neither even or odd. And as I mentioned, 
in these next few videos, we're going to go through a bunch of examples showing even versus odd functions. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.